G'day guys, my name is Jaden. welcome back to my channel. I'm currently on final approach on board this Korean Air 777-300ER from Honolulu. After landing, I'll have about an hour to connect onto a Korean Air 747-8 to Sydney, Australia. It's going to be a very special flight because it's the re-inaugural of any Boeing 747 passenger plane into Australia. Since the very start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Australia said goodbye to Thai Airways, Qantas and Korean Air Boeing 747. Sadly, there's no special event or ceremony happening at Seoul Incheon or Sydney airports to celebrate the re-inaugural 747 passenger plane into Australia. I'm still really proud and glad that I could be on that flight. It's currently the peak hour of arrivals from Australia, USA and Canada. So there are quite a lot of people here at the transit area. Security today took about 15 minutes. Boarding for my flight KE54 to Sydney started while I was still waiting at the security. So today I didn't have any time for the lounge. So I'm going to use the loo quickly and then head straight to the boarding gate. South Korea has some of the quickest internet connections in the world. However, it's not good enough. As you would know, I travel a lot. So very often, there just aren't enough TV shows or movies for me to pick on the airplane TV. And therefore, I use Netflix a lot. In America, you've got over 1,300 TV shows and 4,300 movies. But if you're in the UK, you've got half as little. It's even worse when it comes down to Australia, South Korea and Hong Kong. When you log into Netflix in Korea, you've got only about 10 to 15% of the content that's available if you log in in America. Not slay. So that's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is super easy to use. I have it on my desktop and also on my mobile phone. So if I was still in Korea and I want to access the US version of Netflix, I would open NordVPN, look for the American flag. There are several services available throughout the country, just pick whichever. And voila, it took exactly 5 seconds for me to connect to the United States. So why get NordVPN and why purchase through my affiliate link? Only via the link in the description, you'll get 4 months free for any 2 year plan. And also no strings attached, if you don't like it, you get your money back. Uh, sky priority. Uh, sky priority, okay. Thank you. Here's our gorgeous Queen of the Skies that'll bring us to Australia. It's a seven year old. Korean Air Boeing 747-8, Hotel Lima, 7636. Hello. Thank you. Welcome on board Korean Air 747. My seat tonight would be 35A. Economy is laid out in a standard 343 configuration. At every seat you'll find headsets, a bottle of water, a mini kit, pillow and blanket. Korean Air seems to have different economy product across their fleet. I flew on their A380, 787 and 777 previously. They all have different seats. I'll now quickly go through the seat features. I was going to say there was no cut hook, but there's literally one in front of me. Touchscreen TV, TV remote and USB port. The tray table, pretty standard, you can move it back and forth and fold it in half. It does however feature a cup holder which can be useful. Inside the seat pocket you'll find safety card, magazines. There's a separation between your stuff and the literatures. Like all Korean Air long haul planes, leg room is really good here, about 34 inches. Here you'll find universal power socket. Inside that amenity kit earlier, there are two items, a dental kit and slippers.
Incheon Terminal 2 is a Sky Team and Korean Air territory. You'll find their planes everywhere. We're now airborne and I'll quickly go through the in-flight entertainment. Your TV is touchscreen, easy to use, however content-wise it's quite limited compared to Singapore Airlines, the US carriers and Cafe. The in-flight map is also easy to use, works just like a Google map. About half an hour after takeoff, dinner was served, I got my vegetarian oriental meal ahead of everybody else. I would rate Korean Air vegetarian meals one of the best in the skies. They have six different types of vegetarian meals including Western, Oriental, Indian and Korean. Today I went for the Korean option. For starter we got apple and orange, sliced Korean radish and also mushroom. The cabin crew also asked for my beverage of choice so I could enjoy it before they start their beverage run. I asked for a cup of green tea and they give you a whole tea bag. On the side we've got seaweed and for the main course I believe it was a plant-based pancake with rice. The pancake was really good. The salted sliced radish goes really well with the pancake and rice. The cabin crew have now commenced the regular meal service. You can choose beef potato or chicken salad. Those options, as well as the vegan meals I got, were the exact same I got two weeks ago on Korean Air Flight KE-11 from Seoul Incheon to LAX. For the official beverage run, I went for a Lipton black tea. On your meal tray, you'll find this plant-based creamer. I thought the plant-based milk was a very nice touch because most other airlines don't offer oat milk or any type of plant-based milk unless you're in business class. Right after the meal service and before they switched off the light, the cabin crew handed out arrival cards for Australia. Welcome on board Korean Air 7478 Economy Class Lavatory. There are, I think, four at the back of the plane and two in the middle. So only six for economy really, which isn't enough because I had to wait for a really long time to get in. So here you've got facial um, moisturizer. This is a slightly smaller lavatory. There are bigger ones in economy. The coat hook has been tampered with. Interesting how it stays. Oh, it doesn't. It's now only about 8.30 local Seoul time, so I'm not sleepy at all. So I'm working on my iMovie and watching a movie. The moon is really bright tonight. My iPhone would normally not capture anything outside when it's dark, but tonight's not the case. About two and a half hours before landing into Sydney, 
So it's now 3.30 a.m. Sydney time. Breakfast was served. Or you could say it's late supper in Korean time. Breakfast looks and tastes really bland, but it's healthy I suppose. We got the same starter fruit, a carton of soy milk. You can drink it straight or have it with your coffee and tea. You still got the separate coffee creamer. You got plain congee, salted radish, and also a water cutlet. For my beverage, I went for another Lipton Black, so I'm gonna mix it with a soy milk. If you're enjoying this video so far, please leave a like, comment down below, and share this video with your friends. And most importantly, if you're new to my channel, a big fat welcome. I'm so glad you made it here. I upload a new trip report every week, so be sure to hit that subscribe and bell button so you don't miss out again. The crew are now coming around to collect rubbish. One of the senior purses came to my seat earlier to welcome me on board and thank me for being a Sky Team Elite Plus member. I appreciate how I got this special treatment on every single Korean Air flight since I became Sky Team Elite Plus. The purser came back to check on me just before we land and I asked for a can of soda water. We've started our descent into Sydney's Kingsford Smith Airport and I'll quickly conclude this trip port right here, right now. Our journey today started at Selwyn John Terminal 2. Transit was quick and easy, it was really efficient. Once on board, the cabin crew welcomed us warmly. There was a senior purser who looked after frequent flyers as well. The seat generally was quite comfortable, great recline, and super good legroom. However, I found it a little bit difficult to fall asleep due to the hard seat back and lack of double seat back padding. This is a common issue I have on all Korean Air long haul flights. Now for food and beverages, dinner was excellent. The pancake with rice was really flavorful. Congee for breakfast was bland, so let's see it as a detox meal. Overall, I had a great flight tonight with Korean Air 747. It's great to fly the 747 once again into Australia, and I hope this won't be the last. Now for your information, there are five airlines that fly between Seoul and Sydney. For full cost carriers, they are Korean Air, Asiana and Qantas. Qantas fly the A330, Korean Air fly the 747, 787 and 777, whereas Asiana fly the A380 and A350. If you were to book return from Seoul, Qantas is usually the cheapest, followed by Korean and Asiana. The prices on this route fluctuate a lot, so I'm not going to do the currency exchanges as they might be applicable for any one date. So that's it for the conclusion today, thank you so much for watching. Please enjoy the approach and landing into Sydney. After landing, I will show you the last part of my Japan vlog back in October. See you later, bye.
Konnichiwa! It's my second day here in Takamatsu, Japan, in Shikugo. I got here last night on the Shinkansen and commuter train from Kyoto. Didn't explore at all. Tonight I'm gonna go out and explore the city. My comfort food is biscuit and tea. I have it maybe every other day when I travel. I usually buy the biscuits before I get on the plane. Outfit check. It's quite warm outside, so t-shirt and shorts. I don't remember the last time the hotel gave me newspapers. It's flashing green, so I shall run. So we're at the Takamasu Castle Ruins. There is a 200 yen entry fee, so about 2 Australian dollars. My hotel is a one minute walk from Takamasu Station, and from my hotel it's another one minute walk to this castle. I was looking for the IC card reader, turns out for the train I'm catching, they accept cash on board only. So I would have to come back here later, go to the information desk to cancel the transaction. This train is like the ones you'll find in Adelaide. So short, it's just one carriage. So I came all the way to this area because I heard there's a popular plant-based Japanese restaurant. Unfortunately, when I got there, it was closed. On my way to the restaurant, I stumbled upon this salon. My hair was getting quite long, so why not? That's the restaurant I was talking about earlier. I just got back to Takamasu Station. They say ramen place right opposite the hotel. So that's a wrap for day two. Now it's day three. I'm going to be flying China Airlines to Melbourne tonight. Be sure to check out those videos. Same outfit as yesterday. Today I'll be checking out the shopping street, apparently it's the longest or one of the longest in Japan.
here we are at the Takamasu Central Shopping Street. To give you an idea how long this is, Rundle Moor in Adelaide is the longest in Australia. It's about 500 meters. This one is five times longer at 2.7k. There's a very loud and polite protest happening at the moment. Udon is a must try when you're in this part of Japan, specifically the Sanuki Udon. Let's give it a try. My Adelaide friend asked me to buy some shishido for her, so here we go. I just packed up in my hotel and I went to a cafe to charge my phone, do some video editing before I have to catch the bus to Takamasu Airport. So that's it for the vlog and trip report. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. A big shout out to all my patrons and PayPal Me supporters for your continuous support. It means a lot to me that people support my work and my travels. Thank you and see you next week. Bye bye.